You're here to solve this tough arrow Sudoku by Sam Kappelman lines. It's called 1 to 8, in part because it's got all the digits from 1 to 8 marked in the grid. There are also 8 arrows, and while these arrows on the sides aren't as interesting at the start, these arrows that take 3 cells in each of the corner boxes look very constrained, particularly in the upper right box where you've got a 1 already uh, placed. So 2 plus 3 plus 4 is the minimum sum that can be in that, but where that value is 9, that's also the maximum that any single digit circle can take. So that's a min-max that's forced and pretty common for arrow puzzles. All the remaining circles need to be at least six because of one, two, three from the center space, but a six can't go in this column. So a six is here. You can also see from the seven to the right, the seven is up above and eight down below. And so those are the only valid sums we can get. So we got a six, which is one plus two plus three, which has these limitations given the one up above. Seven is one plus two plus four which will have a one, uh, sorry, one eliminated from that cell. This will be just one and four, this will be one and two. Eight can sometimes be one plus three plus four, but four is already in that box. This will have to be one plus two plus five, and there's a five in that row, but all the other cells look to be free to be any digit right now. So well, that's a good start for the puzzle. I'm not seeing a lot of extra info that's very easy from that. So we may need to look back at these other arrows, and since the digit 1 was pretty key, why don't I start up top here? Um, this arrow can't have a 1 in it, and it's also in a box that has a 2, so it can't have a 2 in it, so this has to be at least 3 or larger, so uh, 3 with 4, 3 with 5, 3 with 6, um, and then that's going to be as large as it can be as a sum of 9. Those are the values that can go into that square. I'm going to get some things out of that, like 8 has to be in one of those two cells. But I think the main thing is going to be looking at what then is the sum of this arrow. So this can be a 7 if it's 3 with 4, or it can be a 9. And I want to eliminate one of those values. 7 is going to be very constrained, and so this look at how this is going to work. If 7 comes in here, we have 3 plus 4 to complete that arrow. But that's going to eliminate all the options but the digit 2 from this upper right cell, eliminate all the options but the digit 2 also from this upper left cell. So where these both take small digits between 2 and 4, there's only going to be one more digit between 2 and 4 that's left over for this. So this arrow can't take both 3 and 4. It will have to take 3 with 5, 3 with 6, 4 with 5. Um, but it can only take 1 of 3 or 4, so this is the digit 9. And I think that logic is going to actually get us one step further. Um, if we then also think about in this box, where does the digit 3 go? So here we've got two places for the digit 3, but what I see is if I put a 3 here, now across all these cells, 3, 4, and 5 get used, and again I've got a 2 in here and a 2 in here, and that's going to cause an issue. So the big break-in that I see at the start of this puzzle is to put a 3 into this cell in the second row, third column after getting the 9 above, and the reason I say it's a big break-in is it looks like it's going to start all this chaining logic. So this 3 forces this to be a single value 4, which comes back over here. This is just a 1, which means it's just a 2. This is just a 4. This 2 and 4 are eliminated, so this is now a 3 and a 2. This 3 means this is a 2. Both of these mean this is a 1, and we're left with 2, 5 down here. We're left with 1, 3 over there. Not more to do about that. Um, looking at some of the digits I just placed, I placed these ones, so I've got a one now in this arrow, that looks interesting. Looking at digit two, I can't place a two in this cell because we put a three here and three's already there, so two is somewhere in this column. That actually is most important because it eliminates a two here, so this is five above, two down below. That means there's a two in one of these cells, but there's a two up above, so we put a two in here, we get this as a place for all the twos. I'm seeing if I have something around the fours or any other digits. There's a four in the middle space here. Actually, there's a three in one of these columns, which looks like a good start, but probably something I didn't do when I placed this four. Four is not possible here, which means that means four plus five is not possible, so nine is going to be three plus six. And that six puts a six into this set, which means a 6 is down here, and the cell can't be 5 or because of what's below, so this has to be a 7, 
So this top row now is five and eight to go, and there's a five in this column. So this is eight here, five here moves the eight there. Seven's now in one of these cells. Actually, four and one are in these cells too. So if this is a one, four, seven, nine, the cell is a single. That puts a nine over in one of these cells. It means this is the last cell for a seven in that whole row. That means this down here is a seven. This lower left corner is seven, eight, nine. And uh, the only digit that I directly see is the nine up above. But notice that if this is a seven in the cell, then this sum is gonna be one plus six, and there's already a six above. So seven is eliminated here. So seven is in the second from the bottom row. So seven's over here. If this is eight or nine, then seven or eight are on this arrow. And eight plus one plus seven will work, nine plus one plus eight will work, but notice seven and eight are already to the right in this row. So the seven, eight come up above, this for sure is a one. That actually looks like it means that there's actually a implication that the eight is not in the cell because the eight's either in the arrow or on the sum. So I think this is a good way to mark this lower left square. I want to come back to some more sure digits where we can find them. We've got a five that's going to be in those cells. I think one thing may be thinking about how we get valid space here we go so we've got two nines and nines are typically very important in arrow puzzles so a nine is in one of these two spots but it can't be along an arrow so nines up above that moves the seven to the right puts a seven here so this will be one four one four that nine means this is an eight so this is a seven nine seven finishing that out those two nines put a nine into this square it's going to give us a, a lot to work with so now we have a way we have Looks like just an eight in one of these cells. We have one, four, five for this column, but one and five are already there. So this is four. This is where the last five goes. This is one, this is four. Now we have eight, one, three in the space and these have to add up to nine. So this has to be eight with one and three. Puts in a one, puts in a three. This puts in a three and a six. Last spot for a six, which puts another six, moves over in the nine, moves up the five finishes this five and six. This has one, eight, four left in the columns. So the only things that add up to nine are one and eight. Mark those in. This has the last eight in this box. We've got four, five, six coming here. Six sort of like that. This is two, three, nine. So this is a single up above and we've got three, nine. Uh, in these bottom cells, this two now means we have four nines, so nine below, four above, because of the nine here, puts in this nine, puts in this three, puts in this three. Uh, this is the last base for one, puts in a one and an eight, puts another eight. We have five and six, this is six above, five below, six, five, four, put in the four, put in the five, and we finish the grid. So. Really elegant puzzle from Sam, a nice design through the one to eight clues, the use of this one, two arrow, very key both at the start for this two, three, four, but also it's really fun interactions at the top. I really appreciated finding this uh, constrained arrow sum that needed to have a bigger digit than two, three, four somewhere in it. And that also then constraining how this three comes in and places a lot of the rest of the puzzle. So it's more standard arrow after seeing that, that aha step, but a really brilliant aha step. Hopefully you got something from this video and enjoyed the puzzle overall and we'll see you again soon.